Welcome to today's interview on Brighton.com. I'm Mike Adams, and today is one of my favorite guests, and one of your favorite guests too, Andy Sheckman, the CEO of Miles Franklin, who was, I think, the original voice, at least the, the one that I first heard, that was warning about global de-dollarization and the rapid advancement of the BRICS currency ecosystem, which is now moving so fast, so, so forward, just leaps and bounds that, in fact, we're going to get an update from Andy here today. He joins us on our show. Welcome, Andy Sheckman. It's an honor to have you on, sir. Great to be here again, Mike. Thanks for having me, sir. Well, since we spoke last, gold and silver have both skyrocketed. Gold perhaps more than silver in terms of, of percentage points. Uh, gold about to break through the 2,200 level. Uh, silver has broken through 25 again. Uh, give us a quick metals update, and then we'll talk about bricks and what's going on there, if you would, please. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, gold certainly has led the way, and and that's that's typical. Typical when we see in previous bull markets where gold would lead the way, and then silver catches up typically and actually outperforms it in terms of its percentage gain. But when we take a look at, at gold and we see the, the, um, the number of central banks accumulating it the, off the charts – I think it's it's important to to underscore this. And and unlike the euphoria that we see right now in the stock markets, um, there is little, if any, uh, mention or or uh, national reporting of gold. And this comes at the same time that the central banks, like I said, have bought more over the last two and a half years than at any time in history. So in the past six months, we've seen gold up 350 bucks. That's a 20 percent increase and, uh, yeah. in six months. <laughs> Six months ago, gold was eighteen hundred and twenty bucks, and even with all the manipulation to keep the price down, even over the last five years, look, gold has risen from twelve hundred and seventy-five an ounce in March of twenty nineteen to to twenty one eighty yesterday. That's roughly a seventy percent gain. Divide that by five, you're at fourteen percent year over year. You know, my mentor Richard Russell used to say, if you make six or seven percent a year, you're a rock star. So. It's interesting because the the conventional wisdom is that gold has not maintained gold is lagging and underperforming. And I would agree to an extent that's true. Yet, you know, 14 percent per year ain't so bad. And it's doing so as the tortoise, not the hare, the tortoise that doesn't catch any attention until it crosses the finish line at the end of the race. The hare, the the NVIDIA and, and, and cryptocurrency markets, which are certainly enticing and, and uh gathering all the information have kind of, I think, put gold on the back burner, yet it continues to do really, really well. And I would argue this is it is at a time when you have those who many would consider to be in the know have been dumping stocks almost as diligently as the central banks have been accumulating gold. Yeah. And yeah so actually, does that mean the billionaires are buying it too? I don't know, because they don't report what they buy, only what they let's, sell. Let's talk about that, because I, I do believe that the rise in gold and the rise in Bitcoin are very much related. And uh, I believe this is also from private conversations with billionaires and, and very influential people as well, that there's there's an understanding that the days of the dollar are, are just about over, which right. I know we'll talk about that with you in detail. But then the question in the minds of a lot of people is, you know, where do you go with assets? If you have billions of dollars in assets and a lot of people do, or even if you have millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands, what do you do with it so that you just don't lose it? And, you know, in many areas of the country, land is overvalued or, or you know, real estate's overvalued. And of course, commercial real estate's a nightmare right now. So where do you go? And I think a lot of people, they're going into Bitcoin because of the ETFs. There could end up being a Bitcoin bubble because of that, but that's, that's not our focus today. And they're going into gold and, and silver. So I, I, I see people doing that for the same reason, because and, and maybe, maybe some people are putting you know, half in gold and half in Bitcoin. I don't know, but they want to be protected from the collapsing dollar. Yeah, I think that's that's really the idea here is that gold and silver to me represent wealth and they've outlived everything the world's ever thrown at it from pandemics to world wars to hyperinflation to the Great Depression. It's wealth. And I think that's the way that the, the big money is looking at it. Uh, not as much a return on the money as much as is return of the money in a world where counterparty risk is, is, is really growing. And I think yes. when you take a look at the commercial real estate issues, we take a look at the over leveraged and undercapitalized banks and even the insurance companies that aren't getting enough attention there. 
uh, I think what gold represents, what silver represents, at least to me, is wealth, not an investment. Certainly, Bitcoin would be in a hell of an investment lately anyway, a speculative one, but has a tremendous upside. And it's, it's proven that. Um, to me, gold is, is being accumulated by, by the big money because, well, look, first of all, when we go all the way up to the top, the central banks, to me, it's, it, it tells us that something is afoot with gold. The fact that the Bank of International Settlements in 2019 might reclassify it as the world's only other tier one asset next to U.S. dollars and treasuries, I think, um, removes the thought of it being a coincidence that central banks, who are not only the most well-funded, but also the well, most well-informed traders in the world, have been on a buying spree that the world's never seen. So, yeah, I think what it really represents is wealth preservation and, and getting out of the way, as you say, of, of what is coming down the pike. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. And in fact, gold has some of the properties that a, a lot of people have ascribed to Bitcoin. You know, I, in fact, I think one of the best properties of Bitcoin is that it is non-counterfeitable, if, if we could say it that way. Governments can't counterfeit Bitcoin. And, and they, they also can't counterfeit gold, obviously. This is one of the reasons that gold and silver have held value throughout the rise and fall of how many, you know, hundreds of civilizations over the years and why gold will outlast the dollar. You know, when the dollar's long gone, gold's still going to be here. And, and by the way, I also think, I think Bitcoin will outlast the collapse of the dollar as well. Again, because it's, it's, it, it can't be counterfeited. But to have a gold-backed system, now let's talk about BRICS now, because Russia announced that the BRICS system is going to have a blockchain component and that nations and commercial entities, as well as end users, everyday users, will be able to use the BRICS blockchain, but it's going to be backed by gold and potentially other commodities. What's the latest news that's on your radar about all that? Yeah, and, and one other thing I'd add to what you just said, too, you know, in a world of, of sanctioning where our brain dead uh, treasury secretary goes into Russia's backyard in Brazil, a member, a charter member of BRICS and says, you know, we need to confiscate, confiscate those assets <laughs> and use them yeah. to rebuild the Ukraine. You're talking as, as brain dead as they get and, and only incentivizing this BRICS coalition. But I'm glad you asked this question because I've been talking about this for a long time and it was very obvious to me that we would see a, a situation where the BRICS would issue um, something to challenge the dollar. And, and look, it's the Sergei Lavrov, I believe is, is his name, or Glasnyev. There's two Sergeys that are Russian finance ministers. And one of them said it a few years ago, look, we will issue a, a new currency, a settlement currency that will be pegged to a basket of commodities. Now, there was a lot of people who, who were downtrodden by the fact that they didn't issue it in August. And James Rickards was talking, but they're going to issue it in August. And well, they didn't issue it in August. They they tasked the finance minister to go back to the drawing board and come to the meeting in October uh, in Russia and present their findings. And by the way, there are 200 meetings starting at the beginning of 2024 that culminate with the big meeting in, in October in Russia, all of them in Russia, all of them BRICS related. There will be news every day about what's going on, but there's some really big news to talk about here that all settle center around this. What we have seen over the last several months has been just what they said they would do. They would go back to the drawing board, but in the meantime, they would settle with local currencies, with each other's currencies, where now uh, Brazil, the second largest producer of corn in the world, is selling corn and soybeans and all sorts of soft commodities to China for, uh, for a yuan, which is immediately convertible, by the way, into gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. It's the same thing Saudi Arabia is doing with Russia selling their uh, or, excuse me, with China selling their oil for yuan, which is immediately convertible into gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. What is gold? That's right. It is uh, the only other tier one reserve asset, as mentioned by the central banks. And this is why, or by the BIS, and this is why the central banks are accumulating it the way that they are. So there was a, an interview that just came out on the Russian news agency, TASS, and it was a Kremlin aide. His name is Yuri, Yuri Yushakov. And he did announce exactly, it kind of kind of um, um, put an exclamation point on, on what uh, Glaziev had, had been saying, that there will be indeed a new settlement system, and it will be a, a digital system. It will be based upon blockchain, and that uh, has to do with the Project M-Bridge that was developed between China, Singapore, 
uh, and United Arab Emirates. It's a system that allows these countries to trade amongst one another with with central bank currencies, digital currencies, uh, sidestepping the SWIFT system. Well, we knew that. We also knew that the um, uh, currency would be a basket of local currencies and commodities. In fact, he just came out and said that. In fact, he said the idea of currency is that there will be two baskets. One basket is for na- is of national currencies of all the cur- countries involved, and the other will be a basket of commodities. And so this is all stuff we've known, and this is stuff we've been told, and and ultimately, I believe, will happen. He also came out and said it will be of, of a digital form, which means it can be used without the banking system. We knew that, too. All of this stuff we've talked about, I've said a thousand times, this is going to happen. It's obvious. They've told us that and the handwriting's on the wall. But here's the interesting part. Now, I have been saying this also, and I'm not trying to pretend that I am a fortune teller, but if you just look closely enough, you can see these things accentuating. Um, I've said for a very long time that the COMEX really is a scam. The COMEX is a situation where the futures market controls the price. Right. And and that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the commodity controls the price. Um, so listen to what he had to say. I'm going to read this to you verbatim because it really truly is very important. He says the second part is price for the moment. Let me say that one more time. For the moment, price is determined by Western speculation. We produce these commodities. We consume them, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. During the COVID pandemic, the price of oil fell to nearly zero. Now, he's wrong there. It fell to negative $40 a barrel, further accentuating how stupid the Western uh, price-setting mechanism is uh, of a futures exchange controlling the price rather than the other way around. But he says it's impossible to make any strategic planning for economic development if you do not control the prices of basic commodities. Now, here's the kicker. Price formation with this new currency – should get rid of Western exchanges of commodities. Price formation with this new currency should get rid of Western exchanges of commodities. In other words, what they are planning on doing at some point is to accentuate the value and the role of whether it be the Moscow Metals Exchange, the Shanghai Metals Exchange, the exchange in Dubai, where right now we're seeing silver trading at almost $3 an ounce higher in Shanghai and gold about $70 higher. That's arbitrage. They're slowly turning up that arbitrage knob so that all of the traders who can access commodities on uh, the West, on, on, on Chicago or on London, can then deliver it in China. But it's important to note one other thing, Mike, and that is this, that Look, they just came out and said, we want to have a BRICS grain exchange because all of the commodity prices for these grains where we produce as much or more than the West are determined on the Chicago Commodity Exchange. We don't like that. They bought the LME a few years ago. I don't know how many people know that, but they bought the London Metals Exchange. China did, which is largely a base metal exchange. They do some precious metals, but mostly things like copper and lead and steel and zinc and all of these things you need for an infrastructure. And now they are going to warehouse those metals traded on the LME in China. So put it all together. They're gobbling up all of these soft goods like grains. Uh, You just heard a report that China just canceled a whole bunch of contracts with the the United States farmers. They're buying it now from Brazil. and and I think a lot of that was corn contracts. Yes, corn and soybean. That's right. And so – you have them wanting to build a grain exchange where they can price the soft commodities. They already own the LME where they're going to be able to price and, and stockpile the base metals. And now they have been using the Western suppression of the precious metals market against us. It's the, it's the jiu-jitsu move. You use the leverage of your opponent against them. We're stupid enough to suppress the price of these commodities to support the illusion of strength of bond market and dollar. Fine, we'll stand for delivery and drain your exchanges. And then (laughs) when there's no one smart enough or dumb enough, rather, to sell or deliver contracts at the make-believe prices, just like that, they will switch the flip or flip the switch, rather. Sorry. And you will see price setting mechanism move to the Shanghai exchange or to the Moscow exchange or to the exchange in Dubai, any exchange other than the West. Hold, hold on a second, the Andy. News coming out of here. What you have said here is is so monumental. I mean, this is historic. This is going to change the history of finance and commodities. So let, let me try to restate it, and you correct me if I've got this wrong. What you're saying is that as Russia and China and the BRICS nations set up their system, which is more decentralized, and it's based on the real supply-demand pricing 
of commodities. So there's going to be real price discovery. This is going to, in effect, expose the price manipulation of the West and effectively end price manipulation because of the arbitrage opportunities that would exist otherwise. Uh, if anybody in the West continues to try to suppress the price of gold and and silver, they're going to lose you know, a trillion dollars in doing so, basically. And those profits are going to flow to BRICS nations that end up just sort of profiting from telling the truth about price. So that means that then the Western nations will no longer be able to artificially make the dollar look good or make their bonds look good by keeping gold and silver artificially low. Is that is that a pretty fair summary of what you just said? Hundred percent. And the only thing I would add to it is that a the exchangers have an op the the option of standing for delivery. If you say you can never stand for delivery anymore, then that's the same thing as as failure. That's the same thing as well. You're a scam. So that's how they're doing it. Okay, fine. You want to make believe prices? We'll stand for delivery. We've seen the COMEX market deliver almost 400 million ounces of silver off the exchange in the last two years. Well, do you know how much India has imported in the last two years? About 400 million ounces. Do you wonder where this stuff is coming from? So if they continue to suppress the price, as these other exchanges have an arbitrage opportunity of rising prices more, more, um, um, accurately reflecting their real value. Yeah, everything that's not nailed down will disappear, will be siphoned right off the exchange. And so they're caught. Wow. And this is why you have some analysts saying that the cartel is done. They cannot continue to suppress the price of gold. Watch it. It's going to take off. Now, you know, these are technical analysts that I have always felt technical uh, analysis is somewhat flawed in a rigged market. But he's saying the rigging is all but done and I, it, I would say it's largely in part to the game that these players are playing against us very smartly, if you will, yeah. um, pushing that using our own suppression against us. Well, exactly. And uh, there's another point of this that I think is really important to consider, which is the fact that the West has used its current control over the dollar and the SWIFT system to carry out economic sanctions. And uh, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you noticed that recently there were another 500 sanctions announced against Russia. And I, I think at this point, Russia's like, uh, uh, oh, don't throw me in that briar patch. You know, uh, please br bring on more sanctions. It's just making our domestic economy stronger. But under the BRICS system, which, as I understand it, would be decentralized, it would be uh, no one would be able to weaponize it against another country. And th that's the key point is that. All these countries around the world are so tired of being put under the thumb of the U.S. and the dollar, being forced to do crazy, insane things domestically, like, I don't know, you know, start taking on LGBT themes because otherwise you're going to be sanctioned by the U.S. And, and that's happened. Or to start, you know, approving GMOs in your country because otherwise you'll be sanctioned by the West. Without sanctions, all these other countries become happier and more free all over the world. And that's what BRICS offers, right? 100%. Uh, and it is the weaponizing of the dollar through the sanctions that is, has created the, the rallying cry. If you look at the way that the world looks at, much of the world looks at, at the United States, look at it from the standpoint of Iraq. We invaded them 20 years ago. Uh, in in 2003 or four, and we did it arguably under false pretenses. We were looking for weapons of mass destruction, and sorry, we didn't find any. And yet, we're still in their country today, sanctioning 14 of their banks for trying to buy liquid natural gas from Iranian banks. And 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 well, that's a no go for sure, you know. So we sanctioned them, and 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 then we control their oil revenue. They made 90 billion dollars in oil revenue last year. Asked us last year for one billion dollars. We said no, not at this time. So they said, fine. They have formally applied to BRICS. They have kicked uh, or are in the process of kicking Western coalition forces out of the country. They yep. made trading in dollars illegal. If you do and you own a business, you'll end up in jail. And, and there are no green bills at all, tens, twenties, hundreds in the whole country of Iraq any longer. This is the way the world looks at us, that we have a double standard of justice and, and what is uh, you know fair and equal. And yet other countries, if they don't align with us ideologically, yeah, you're going to get sanctioned. And look at the sanctions don't do anything. You know, you got most of the world still trading with Russia and their currency was amongst, if not the best performing currency in the world last year in right. the midst of crippling sanctions. So all it does, I think, is is reinforce the need 
for all of these countries to find safety in numbers and rally against that hegemony. Now, you know, taking a step back in a different direction, Mike, I would say it's almost too stupid to be stupid. I mean, is this intended? You know, when you look at the lead economic advisor of the U.S. government being Jared Bernstein, a man who has a degree in music and a master's degree in social work, his entire thesis is to lose the world reserve status. And what better <laughs> yeah. way to do it by not only weaponizing the dollar and confiscating forex assets of, of Russia, but telling the linchpin of the dollar hegemony, Saudi Arabia and OPEC, hey, we're going green. And when you see the crown prince of Saudi Arabia tell the world that, hey, China was our most important trading partner this year and for the next 50, those words were chosen specifically. It was 50 years ago that we signed the Petro deal. And so when you put it all together, if this country was what it once was when we were kids, where you respected authority, where there wasn't lawlessness in the cities, where we had fair elections, where there wasn't question if, if the justice system was administered equally and if the borders weren't wide open, allowing 12 million people into this country who haven't been vetted, or by the way, if 1% want to do damage to this country, it's 120,000 people. The world is looking at the United States like we've gone mad and, and yes. we have lost our credibility. And so when you put it together, I mean, could this be intended? You, you blow up your image on the world stage, you weaponize the dollar, you sign an executive order to go green, and then you let this country literally lose its bearings and have its, its, its culture whitewashed. I hope I'm wrong, but I almost feel that this is is just too stupid to be stupid. So, yeah, I think it's going to get a lot crazier between now and the election with all of these meetings leading up to the big one in October and the election just a few days later. Um, yeah, I think it's time to buckle up. Well, I've described the West as a suicide cult, and I want to ask you about Western Europe. But first, let me give you an opportunity to, to talk about your website, milesfranklin.com. And of course, you are in the metals market. Uh, just give us a quick overview about what you do, what you offer to uh, you know to viewers and customers. Yeah, we we have been in business for 34 years, and we spent a long time building a website. Actually, have a new one that's going to be rolled out in June. Uh, but for you know, for the most part, I've always pushed back against being an online company. So, if any of your listeners would like to see a price list that's far more competitive than what we have online, just send us an email at info at milesfranklin.com. And uh, although, you know, I know that you're, you're very um, uh, impartial and, and, and we don't have a relationship, I, I'm still more than uh, happy to, uh, to get the information that they came, that Mike Adams sent me so that we can know where these people came from. We'll send you um, a price list with no obligation. We'll answer any questions that you have, whether it be about what you hear here or any questions that you have related to the precious metals market, anything from soup to nuts, uh, IRAs, uh, storage, whatever. But we've done it for 34 years without a customer complaint. And, um, you know, like I said before we got on this show, more than anything, it's an honor to be here talking this with you because I have a great deal of respect for the way that you look at the world and the way that you inform people with, with really very, very important information that the media is just keeping people in the dark about. Well, that's... Uh, that feeling is reciprocated right back at you there, Andy. And I think it's important for our viewers to know, you know, this is not a sponsored segment. You're not a sponsor of our show, but I've always admired your, you, not only were you one of the first people to sound the alarm over global de-dollarization, you really understood what was happening years before most people even picked up on it. You know, when, when you were talking about BRICS nations getting together and, and doing a currency, a lot of people were like, what's BRICS, right? Remember those, that, that a few years back, like, what's BRICS? What are you even talking about? Or de-dollarization, and then the mainstream media would say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. There's no de-dollarization. Uh, yeah, really? Have you, have you been anywhere else in the world other than Virginia or Washington, D.C.? You're living in a bubble. The rest of the world right. hates the dollar, right? But you've been on top of this. Your analysis is spot on. I know you monitor many, many news feeds, and you do, by the way, a ton of of interviews. I, I watch many of your interviews that you do with other shows and other hosts and on Kitco and, and what have you. And you're always spot on. So uh, I'd like to have you on more if, if you and I can ever work that out. I know we're, we're both so busy, that's difficult. But let's talk about Europe because Germany, and, and again, this is something that you predicted also. Germany is suffering an economic industrial collapse. There's, there's no other way to put it. And it looks like they're going to bring back the military draft, too, by the way. And I think in Denmark, they've announced they're going to draft women into the military. I mean, the, Europe is, is absolutely collapsing. France is suffering the economic consequences of energy loss. The UK 
it, it, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's a nightmare wrecked country at this point with a military. They have two aircraft carriers. Neither one of them works. The propellers don't work. Their missiles don't launch. The British military has become a clown show, a, a, a joke of world history. I'm sorry to say. I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that about the British people. There are a lot of British people who watch this show and they agree with us. But then again, our own military has kind of become a bit of a woke joke, too, at the, at the highest levels, too. So I'm not picking on the British. But what would you say about what's happening in Europe and what that means for the world in terms of where things are going? No, it just means that 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 this alliance, this Western alliance, has lost a lot of its credibility and a lot and and a lot of its uh, potency. You know, when you when you compare it to the BRICS, who have two of the three largest nuclear arsenals on the planet, and and countries that are resource rich, and and all of the alliances are are being built by countries that are massively resource rich, and those that have strategic shipping lanes. In fact, if you take a look, there was an article that just came out about the British, and they're very, very concerned that the majority of the strategic commodities that they need to run their country, whether it be base metals or, or rare earths or whatnot, they're reliant upon imports from other countries like China and the Eurasian continent. So yeah, I think that what you see in, in, in Europe is they're just a little bit ahead of where we ought to be or we will be if we continue down this path. And, and really what it says is that the strength of the G7 is, is breaking up tremendously. I mean, you could argue they're all broke, they're all insolvent, uh, they've all lost their bearing, they all have uh, very little in the way of, of um, resources. And, um, you know, it's the end of, of I don't, 500 years worth of Western dominance. You can see it starting to move up that, that hockey stick uh, style of, of uh, progression um, culturally, morally, um, spiritually, religiously, economically, all of it. And it's really a very scary, sad thing for all of us in the West who have grown accustomed to a grandiose um, style of living that, that I think you could argue if, if these progressions continue, right. um, things are going to change in a very big and meaningful way across the globe, not just here in the United States, but our allies in, in Europe as well. Well, let's let's go back to the the U.S. then. And uh, in news this week, the what's it called? Family Dollar Stores, which I think is under the uh, Dollar Tree uh, Corporation, they announced they're closing a thousand stores. And you know, you may recall that over the last few years there was a shift from people who shopped at Target they started shopping at Walmart, and then people who shopped at Walmart they started shopping at the Dollar Tree. And then what's happened lately is people who were shopping at the Dollar Tree are now stealing from the Dollar Tree. So shoplifting is the number one issue that's causing them to close a thousand stores. Uh, uh, Andy, if you have to steal from the dollar store, things are bad. You know, <laughs> your life has gone to pot if you're if you're steal, you're shoplifting dollar store items. You know what I mean? That's a bad sign, but that's happening all across this country. What do you, where do you think this goes from here? Well, Jared Gerald Salente always says when people lose everything, they lose it. And, you know, it's true. I mean, it, it, where do we go? What does this really say? Uh, we have a country that's adding a uh, trillion dollars to the debt every 100 days. We have a country that is massively in debt, the largest ever in terms of credit card debt, in terms of mortgage debt, in terms of uh, auto loans, in, in, including student debt, which tragically is the largest asset of the United States government, according to their 2022 balance sheet. 2023 didn't come out yet. It's usually a few months after, but $1.6 trillion is the largest asset of the U.S. government student debt. And, and that's coupled with people living paycheck to paycheck, uh, 65% of the country, 45% earning over six figures living paycheck to paycheck. And at the wow. same time, we've lost our unity. We are divided. And, and so, yeah, you have to ask yourself, what does this mean? But then take it a step further. And, and when you see all of these, these, these stores, you know, they all have uh, most of them are, are loans um, or leases that are that are controlled by the commercial banks. So whether you're talking these types of stores or you're the big office buildings that, that are all coming due in terms of, of resetting uh, these these leases and, and these loans, you're looking at a full fledged banking crisis. And all of the stores and all of the bars and all of the restaurants that have opened up around these shopping centers or 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 large office buildings, it, it just creates it, it it creates what I believe is a um, kind of like a, a spiral, a debt spiral. And it, it's very scary when you start to see places like 
like the Dollar Tree um, go out of business. Uh, it, it's very, very, very concerning. And you're right. I mean, how do you stay in business when when your biggest concern is not getting business? It's 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 theft, and and you can't even do anything about it. And then these people aren't even prosecuted and come right back and do it again. It, it's it's a scary thing, Mike. It's it's something I thought I would never see in my in my entire life. And and we are. I just saw a story. Well, let me back up and say it this way. Families that couldn't afford to eat by buying food at a grocery store, they were, they were shopping at the dollar store and getting some of the worst, craziest, you know, low-grade food, and some of it contaminated. The FDA just issued a warning that the, the cinnamon apple puree for children sold at these dollar-type stores had over 5,000 parts per million lead in it, which is insane. Like, that's, that's not... That's not uh, some slight contamination. That's that's weaponization. That's like po- someone poisoned the food, right? And that was sold at these these dollar type stores. But beyond that, when you can't afford to buy the dollar store food, you know, uh, machetes, Haiti, cannibalism. You know what I mean? It, it's like, what's the next step? Do do people start eating each other? Like like we've kind of reached the bottom of what people can do while maintaining any sense of civility from here seems like chaos or, or anarchy is the next step. What do you think? Yeah, hundred percent. And at the same time, you have CPI numbers hitting 5.4% annualized rate. Uh, Janet Yellen coming out and saying she wished she never would have said that that inflation was transitory and we won't go back to rates that we saw pre 2019 fourth month in a row of climbing prices. Yet, ironically, they exclude food, and energy and housing from the CP lie numbers. And so, yeah, where do you go? And if you can't feed your family, you know, as a father, what do you do when your children are starving? You end up doing things that you would never otherwise do. Um, and, you know, she even came out and said recently, Janet, that I wouldn't expect this to be a smooth path month to month. Things are going to get worse. Inflation is going to get worse. And um, where do you go? I don't know. Look at these inner cities already that are ghost towns. Look, I, I grew up in Minneapolis. I'm here right now. Ironically, last time I did a show with you, I was on the road and I, my corporate office is still here, but I left because of what they did to the inner city and and let it be eviscerated and let the third precinct burn down on national TV and defunding the police nationally, leading the charge. I left. But a lot of these cities are a lot worse off than Minneapolis. And imagine you are trapped in an inner city. Uh, you don't have anywhere the wherewithal to be able to move. You don't have the capacity to be able to grow food. You can't even afford it. And then your only source of getting anything like the Dollar Tree is leaving. What do you do? Um, it's a very scary situation. And, you know, the whole concept of civil war, the whole concept of all of these things that we once thought were impossible to ever happen. I mean, you think about it. Uh, desperate people do desperate things. And I think we are reaching that point of desperation. Yet at the same time, we are we are told, well, everything is so great by by the talking heads and the smooth landing and look at the stock market and yeah, you know, all of this stuff is blurring the reality that the, the economy is crumbling out from underneath us. Let, let me ask you scary, this. Scary, scary times. Because you, I know you have a lot of new customers that, that, you know, you're always having new people come to you as they realize what's going on. Uh, again, your website, milesfranklin.com. So folks, if you're interested and what's the email address where they can contact info. you? Is Info. Info at Miles Franklin, and we'll give you a price list, which are much more competitive prices okay. than what you see on the website and any questions you have. All right. Info at milesfranklin.com. Send an email to Thank Andy. You. But what I want to ask you is, what are you hearing now from your new customers that might be different from what you've heard in years past? It's just because I, I know, you, you know you and your sales team, you have conversations with people kind of assessing what are their goals, what are their concerns, what are they doing? What, so what are you hearing? Most of it centers around the banking industry. We added 14,000 clients in 45 days when Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank failed, and they were bailed out. Mind you, that's illegal. The Dodd-Frank Act said bailouts are no longer legal, and that's why there was such an uproar when, when uh, and during the congressional testimony, the House testimony, when uh, Janet Yellen told the senator from Oklahoma that, yes, it's actually not legal any longer, but it was an uber-majority vote of the FOMC, the FDIC, myself, and the president, because it was too systemic. People don't know what bail-ins are, and uh, and I think, but they understand that there are problems with the banks. And 
um, wait till there's a bank bail-in. You know, I, I, I live in a, I'm fortunate enough to live in a, in a gated country club community in Florida. And I play golf with a lot of guys and there are some very sophisticated people there and business owners. I ask them all the time as I'm golfing with them, you know what a bail-in is. And I have yet to meet any of them, none of them. And these are guys that own big businesses that know what it is. Wait until there's a bank that is bailed in and you are an unsecured general creditor of the bank. Even if you Google what is a bail-in, it will tell you the FDIC has several obligations, four in particular. But the two that really stuck out to me is to, number one, make the shareholders and the unsecured general creditors, which are the depositors, be responsible for the losses of the bank. And number two, that they have, I think, between one and three or two and four years to, to pay that back off. So even if the bank is bailed in, you're not getting your money back for a while until the dust settles. All of the banks that have failed have either been bailed out illegally or gobbled up in terms of consolidation, as we're told by by Fed Chairman Powell. There will be bank consolidations. There will be bank failures. You're hearing 300, 500, who knows how many. The point of it is, is that I think what is really shook people up, at least the people who have paid a little bit of attention, is that since we were little kids putting nickels and dimes in our piggy bank, we always thought that the concept of a bank deposit was safe. And in 2020, they relinquished all deposit requirements. You're not a depositor anymore. You are, in essence, making an unsecured loan to the bank. And That's people right. are beginning to realize that. So more than anything, people just say, I want my money out of the banks. And and yet they haven't even begun to get a taste of what that fear really looks like until we see a flat out bank run. And, and I don't think we're there yet, but we're close. Well, I, I want to ask you, too, what are some of the signs that we should watch for uh, signs of the accelerating dollar collapse? I think we're seeing some of those signs right now, but I want to ask your opinion on that. But it's just astonishing to me that you said business owners really don't have a working knowledge of how banks work and the vulnerabilities that they face. You know, I, I'm a business owner. And I have to have a lot of cash flow to buy food materials, raw materials, and pay salaries and so on. And I try to minimize any dollar exposure that I have in the banks because I know there's a day coming where that's that all goes to zero. I've already written that off. Like, whatever's in the bank, it's gone. But most people don't realize that. They think they're all protected. It's all insured. Everything's going to be fine. The dollar is going to be the world's currency forever. They're wrong on all those assumptions, aren't they? Hundred percent, and recency bias will be a killer. Normalcy bias will be a killer. You know, kind of at a, a, a there are people that are very well read. Um, you know, I live across the street from a guy that's one of the biggest traders in in Southern Florida. He's in the Forbes Top Forty list nationwide. He manages billions of dollars. Wouldn't know a gold coin if it fell on his foot. He is very well read. He just reads the wrong stuff. And so, <laughs> right. you know, a, a, a guy like you has journalistic integrity. But, you know, there are no guys like you on the mainstream anymore. And and just to hammer that home, you know, it's not really what you asked me, but I flew home from Florida the day uh, a few weeks ago uh, to Florida when um, the Supreme Court came out with their ruling that the Colorado case was was um, illegal. And it was a, a, major, a 7-0 or 6-0, whatever, vote Um However many justices there nine. are. They all it was all nine. Nine. Yeah. nine. Thank you. That shows you how literate I am about <laughs> no, 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 uh, a, the Supreme Court. You got a lot on your mind. But it's okay. In any case, all of the justices voted nine. No, yep. And, 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 and thank God they did. I mean, it was obvious that that was the right decision. But as I'm landing in Florida, I'm watching this uh, on Fox, on, on the TV on the back of the seat. And I'm intrigued by it. But what struck me is I could see half of first class was watching CNBC and half was watching Fox, almost right down the middle. And there wasn't, they didn't even, Trump didn't come, he's all over Fox. He's speaking about it. Trump is, is, is talking about the decision and on CNBC, they never even cut to it. They never mention it. They're, they're talking about stocks and NVIDIA and half of the country has no idea what's coming. And I think that's yeah. really the scary part about all of this is that the people are in the dark. Um, and I think that's one of the things that's going to be the most uh, the most concerning is that I think this all of this stuff, as I said to you two years ago, happens on a Sunday night. You're going to wake up Monday morning to a new reality and they'll say, oh, my God, I never saw this coming because they're they're not being informed. And it takes effort to to come and watch Mike Adams a after a long day of work. It, it takes effort to to 
expand your mind and do these things rather than just turning on the news as you're getting dressed before you leave for work in the morning. And and I think they'll, it'll catch a lot of people really, really off guard well, because they don't know what's happening. Let's talk about that that day. We still have a few minutes left here. And this is going to be controversial. You might disagree with me. I don't know. But I, and I'm going to provide context here. I don't wish harm upon anybody. I don't want anybody to lose their wealth. Let me be clear about that. And I think... It, you know, people are being looted right now by all the money printing and all the dishonesty of the dollar. The dollar is being printed without our permission and weaponized against us by funding propaganda by the CDC, for example, or funding wars and bombs, killing innocent people all over the world and funding programs that attempt to enslave us. I think, and this is, this is what I want your reaction on, I think although there's going to be a lot of short-term suffering and destruction, I think the collapse of the dollar is actually a very necessary and positive thing for human freedom. What do you think? I completely agree. Um, there's no question about it. You know, if you take a look at the way the BRICS run their 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 whole entity, they're all there through cooperation. They're not beholden to anyone. The presidency rotates. The, their, their growth is through cooperation, not through coercion. They're going into other countries and, and with cooperation, building oil refineries and roads and bridges and maritime channels, building gold mines, helping develop these countries in a cooperative fashion, the way business should be done. Mutual cooperation, mutual benefit is the name of the game. And and it's not just the dollar, it's, it's 500 years worth of Western um, hegemony. And I think it, it is a necessary thing. Unfortunately, it's going to be a painful one for this country, especially if you have no understanding of, of what's coming. And, and again, I will I will re reiterate, if you wanted to make this happen because you understood that you need to do it, you 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 what do you do? Well, first you weaponize the dollar and then you sign an executive order to go green uh, and, and break the dollar hegemony, the linchpin of it. And then you destabilize the country to make everyone say, well, you know what? They're not the country that it used to be. But what happens is when that happens, and we've talked about this before, you're the only person I've ever heard mention um, Operation Sandman, and that fits like a hand in glove with what I thought. Like that on a Sunday night, they all agree, look, we're going a different direction. We're not going to take dollars for oil anymore. And when that happens and the dollar collapses as it's being dumped across the globe because the synthetic demand for holding it for the last 50 years has created massive demand and, and strength of the dollar. But you had to hold it in order to buy oil. So the stockpiling of dollars has created a synthetic illusionary demand for the dollar. And if that That's ends, right. if that ends and all of the dollars get dumped in, and the byproduct of hyperinflation as the world throws dollars back to the U.S. would be interest rates that spike far above what Powell has the, the nerve to do. He's not going to pull a Paul Volcker, oh, yeah. even though he said he was his mentor. But what's the key to that? Mike, the key to that is you now have a villain to point to, and that villain is Xi Jinping and Open and Putin and OPEC. And and and, and, and by the way, uh, Operation Sandman, you've watched it. It is in play. It's just not all at once. It's country by country, month after month after month. Operation Sandman is rolling out in real time. You, I mean, you see the news announcements. How many countries are selling their commodities and assets in uh, national currencies right now? The the number is over a hundred. I mean, countries. And you know what they're doing with the proceeds? If you look at, at the bond market since 2020, since 2000, it's averaged just a couple percent because of all the low interest rates. But with it, you have the default risk of the U.S. government and the sanction and coercion risk of the U.S. government. So what are they doing? They're buying gold that since 2000 has averaged 7.8 percent per year, outpacing the S&P and way outpacing the bond market, but without the default risk, without the coercion and the confiscation risk. So you have no counterparty risk in an asset that has a much longer track record as being an asset rather than a country's debt without yep. all of these problems. And so. You know, what is gold again? Oh, yeah, it's the only other tier one reserve asset. There is no coincidence that the central banks, who are not only the most well-funded, but more importantly, well-informed traders in the world are doing what they're doing. So to your point, yes, I do believe that that it has to happen. I think our leaders are, you know, they're not stupid. They're, they're, they're maybe immoral, but they know what they're doing. And I think, you know, when you see the BRICS say, Look, you know, they've been suppressing the price forever. They know what we're doing. All of this is going to end very poorly to think that this is 
purely coincidental is, is a mistake. And the dollar bulls and the recency bias people and the normalcy bias people will be run over by this. And look, I oh, yeah. do not sell gold and silver to get wealthy. Mike, I sell it because it is wealth that has outlived everything the world's ever thrown at it. And the biggest money in the world, namely the central banks, are stockpiling it at a level the world's never seen. So, yeah, this is going to happen. And you are seeing these countries choose gold in many respects over U.S. treasuries. And that will run to an all out you know, panic at some point as they get dumped. But well, little by little by little, then all at once, they're very methodical. Every time I see another announcement from TASS, the Russian news agency, about their BRICS system, their BRICS blockchain system, and like their most recent announcement said uh, how aggressively they're pushing to get many, many countries signed up before the end of 2024. And it seems to me that 2025 is the year that you're going to see a lot of global use of that BRICS system. But every time I see an announcement, you know, the, the first thought in my head is, how quickly can I buy this? Like, can, can I buy BRICS, you know, blockchain tokens or coins? Because I, I don't want to be in the dollar. I know what's going to happen to the dollar. And yeah, gold and silver, absolutely. And, and land and, and ammunition and whatever. But I'm also thinking that, I mean, my company buys food from all over the world. We, I mean, we, we buy food from Mexico, we buy food from Europe, we buy food from India, you know, Pakistan, you name it. How quickly can I start investing in an asset that can't be counterfeited, that I can use to buy food all over the world to have my supply chain? I would, I would dump the dollar to get into that thing as quickly as possible. And if I'm thinking that, Andy, a lot of other people are thinking the same thing. Absolutely. And they know that the common denominator to all of it is pegging to gold. And this is where I think you'll see a marriage between blockchain technology and the price of gold. And, um, you know, it, it's coming. They, in, it's interesting. They issued uh, bonds a lot quicker than I thought they would, would. I think they were called Maharaja bonds. They they issued a few billion dollars worth of BRICS bonds here recently. And they were very clear to say only offered to, to BRICS member countries. I don't know when that day will come where the BRICS currency or a common settlement currency will be listed on the Forex exchange. But let's make something very clear. In my opinion, even before they finally come to, and, and I think they're going to do things like in crypto speak, only when they have mass adoption, and right. then they'll issue a common settlement currency. But in the meantime, by trading in local currencies, like like Brazil selling their corn to to China for yuan, like you know selling in r rubles or rupee or, or any of these local currencies, that has a massive destabilizing effect on the settlement status of the dollar. And then instead of buying treasuries, because remember, the petrodollar deal wasn't just that we're going to value oil globally in dollars. It's we take the excess reserves and buy treasuries. So now oh, right. you're settling in other currencies. And instead of buying treasuries with the reserves, you're buying gold or commodities that would be a substitute to the treasury market, which has a massive effect on the reserve status of the U.S. dollar. So little by little, they are chipping away at the dollar hegemony, first by trade, and then ultimately by not buying our, our treasuries. And so it's happening. Now, when they do issue a common settlement currency, then I think it will be something that will be the death knell for the dollar because they will do it the right way, the way they've done everything very slowly and methodically. This has been going on for 17 years. Oh, but yeah. to your point at the very beginning of this conversation, it is most certainly accelerating. And there are almost, well, they said at the beginning of the year, there'd be 200 meetings, all BRICS related in Russia, related to the BRICS um, meeting ultimately in October. You're talking 200 meetings between now and October or some are already behind us, but 175 more. There's going to be a lot of developments that I think will rattle the bushes. And when they finally do make that, you know, there's 35 countries that have now formally applied, including Mexico has has um, um, expressed interest in joining. And when they do flip that switch, they will have the majority of human population, the majority of all the gross GDP. They will have the majority of all the oil production and energy yep. production, rare earth metals, precious metals commodities, you name it, not to mention two of the three largest nuclear arsenals on the planet. And and I think they're going to do it the right way. And how much and you want to bet sadly the, enough. the West will try to outlaw, like like in America, they'll probably pass a law like they're doing the TikTok ban right now. They're going to pass a law probably that American citizens can't use the BRICS currency, which will be economic suicide of the West. It, it, it'll basically uh, mean that we are shut off from global marketplaces and we won't be able to compete. But that's, I mean, 
We are living, Andy, we are living, as Americans, we are living under the thumb of a suicide death cult that is in charge. And, and, and it's even crazier in Europe. I mean, that's a death cult on steroids right there. I don't know how Western civilization survives this, but Andy, we're out of time for today. Any final thoughts before we wrap this up? The only way it survives it is listen to people like you who are who are um, courageous enough to, to get the message out. And that's why it's such an honor to be here. You do the best you can, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and uh, build a community like you do and um, keep speaking the truth. So uh, I'm watching everything you do. I'm always honored to come back on, say the word, I'll be here. And I think it's going to be a really, as the Chinese curse says, may you live in interesting times. It's going to be the (laughs) most interesting few months, I think, of my life and of of all of our lives as we head towards probably the most important election in the history of this country. So, Mike, please keep doing what you're doing. We all need you. I will. And let me let me end this with one teaser that you will really enjoy. You know, we're we're about to release a new AI language model that's at Brighton.ai. Well, guess what? Um, I, I have even said this publicly. Our first models focus on herbs, nutrition, and superfoods and everything, but I've already prepped a data set on Austrian economics and gold and silver. We are going to have, Andy, this is, this is a couple months out, but we're going to have the world's first AI chatbot language model that actually speaks Austrian economics. So, Well, that, that would be, <laughs> and for those of you who don't understand in a nutshell, you know, Austrian economics is based upon... Um, savings, investment, and reinvestment. And the Keynesian model, which is dying, is, is, is basically spending and taxation. And uh, it, it's a bad model, and it's on its way out. And, and, and the uh, Austrian model is the brick house and the three pigs and three little pig stories. So I yeah. can't wait to check that out. And again, thanks for having me, Mike. I wish you and everyone else out there uh, all the best and and look forward to picking up where we left off uh, real soon. All right, we'll do Andy. We'll get you scheduled back soon as things accelerate, especially, and folks, the website is milesfranklin.com. And as Andy said, if you want to email him for a super special price list, just email info at milesfranklin.com and say that you heard about it here on the show. Um, And, I don't know that, that does that get special pricing or, or it, it, what it really does is it gets special treatment more than anything. And, I see. Okay, and that's okay. important to me just to know where things are coming from. And, and we'll make sure that people are getting the, as good of a price as they'll find anywhere. And more importantly, white glove service. Okay. Cause you, you like our people cause our people are informed is what you're saying. That's, that's a big difference, Mike, <laughs> and they are informed. And it is a huge difference when you talk to people who understand what's happening. It's the why yes. that matters, not the what. Yeah, good point. Okay. All right, Andy, thank you so much for your time today. Have a great afternoon. We'll talk again soon. You as well. Thanks again, Mike. All right. Take care, Andy. Bye-bye. All right, folks, right there. That guy is probably, arguably, the most informed guy on global de-dollarization. You should listen to what he has to say. Share this interview everywhere. Repost it if you'd like to. Visit his website at milesfranklin.com. And thank you for watching today. I'm Mike Adams, the founder of brighton.com. Take care, everybody. Also, have you seen these? These are goldbacks, and we've got different denominations to show you there. They come in 50, 25, 10, 5, and 1s. That's a stack of 1s. Uh, these, th- this is 1 1,000th one of a troy ounce of gold, and it's embedded in the polymer layers in the gold backs, and you can get them, again, at those different denominations, so it's good divisibility of gold. And since the gold is in the gold back itself, it's not some fiat currency. It's actually a piece of gold that you can use for gifts or barter or trade, even in a local community. If the grid goes down, a lot of people might be using gold and silver or goldbacks. Now, if you go to our website, verifiedgoldbacks.com, that's our affiliate site. We do earn a little bit off your purchase there, but what we've done is we've done the laboratory testing. And on that site, you'll see my lab test results, how we tested them using a kiln, using an ICPMS mass spec instrument, using an acid stone test here as well, we verified the purity and the masses of the gold that are embedded in these different bills. And in fact, I've got here in these vials in my hands right here, this is actually one of the pellets of gold. I melted it down into like a BB shape. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got, I've got gold in these three vials right here. Yeah, there you can kind of see it moving around there. You can hear them. And we did the tests on on these, and this is the gold that came out of these gold backs. So we were able to confirm the gold is real. It's 24 karat plus, 
and it actually exceeds the mass that's required. Our recovery ranged from 102% to about 100 and what was it? Typically 105%. I've got the results here. Check this out. Look at these photos. I did all this myself. So if you melt them down, you get this, and then you keep melting, you get it into like a pellet, and then you use an analytical balance in the laboratory, and you do the math. It's pretty amazing. At first, you get this gold foil, which is pretty cool, and then you can melt the foil into this like BB pellet looking thing. Anyway, here's the recoveries we got uh, from a low of 102.89% or 101.96%. That's the lowest to 107% recovery. And the bottom line is, if you want real gold in your hands that's divisible, that is also incredibly beautiful, that people instantly love, they recognize this, they see, wow, that's gold. And they're actually looking at gold. This isn't paint. This is the gold just kind of made really thin and put into this format and then sandwiched between polymers. Goldbacks are your answer. So check out verifiedgoldbacks.com. And there you can purchase goldbacks and you can help support this platform at the same time because we earn a small percentage. And this is a really good form of off-grid money. And you might have gold coins or silver coins. And I strongly encourage gold and silver coins, but a gold coin is a pretty big piece of value to, to, to try to trade with. You know, you're at a farmer's market, like, oh, I want a loaf of bread. What do you have? I have a one ounce gold coin. Well, that's worth $21 hundred dollars now or 2200 gold skyrocketing so what are you going to do like buy a loaf of bread and then give me change for the one ounce of gold no but if you're trying to buy that loaf of bread with a gold back you say hey how would you like one one thousandth of an ounce of gold for that loaf of bread in this format gold backs which actually has a premium over just the raw price of gold because it's it's better than just one one thousandth of an ounce of gold i mean it's in a format that's it's beautiful to look at it's durable you can carry it it fits in, in a wallet or a pocket or a purse. A lot of merchants will say, absolutely, I'll take that gold. And now you can buy a loaf of bread or you can buy, you know, a bag of potatoes or, or, or whatever, depending on what the economy looks like after the debt collapse. I don't know what it's going to look like exactly, but I know I want gold and silver. And I want to have lots of different options of money that works off grid. So, yeah, our grid's not reliable. Our monetary system is not reliable. The currency is not reliable. But you know what you can count on? Um, <laughs> physical gold and silver in your hands. That's what you can count on. It doesn't need a password. It doesn't, you don't need to log in. It doesn't need the bank's permission to have value. It doesn't need the backing of a government. You don't have to have faith in the treasury to confiscate money from people. This has value all by itself. It, and gold has had value for centuries. I mean, come on, millennia, what am I saying? And it will continue to have value long after the collapse of the dollar and probably the collapse of Western civilization itself. So there you go. That's why the wealthy are buying gold like crazy. That's why gold is spiking. What is it now? Let, let me actually bring it up. Gold. Here it is right now. Gold at $2,128. Silver at 23.67. These are all skyrocketing. Bitcoin is skyrocketing. Gold skyrocketing. Uh, Monero is skyrocketing. Why? Because people who know what's about to happen, they are bailing out of the banks. They're bailing out of the dollars. They're getting out of the system. They're going to off-grid forms of asset protection. And that's gold and silver and land and certain types of crypto and maybe, you know, food supplies or ammunition supplies. And if you want food, of course, check us out at healthrangerstore.com and we've got you covered there. So consider your options, do your research and make sure you are ready for what's about to happen. Look at that. That's that's beautiful. That's gold. That This is so cool. The 50 is thick. It is very thick. And it's much larger than the one because there's 51 thousandths of an ounce of gold in this. And if you could feel it, it's heavier. It's, it's thicker. It, because the real, the gold is actually in there. You really can't put much more gold in a bill than 51 thousandths of an ounce. So they've done a great job with this, the gold back company. And uh, this, this is something that has really intrigued a lot of people and it's another form of having stores of value that are highly divisible and have high utility, more utility than just a one ounce coin itself. So be sure to check these out again, verifiedgoldbacks.com. And thank you for your support. Get ready because we're headed into interesting times. Be safe. Take care. A global reset is coming. And that's why I've recorded a new nine hour audiobook 
It's called the Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide. It's free. It's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.